<laughs> stop like there. Just... Oh my god, I'm I'm going blind as well. Oh, it's brutal, man. Right, again. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. Got a bit more of a casual video, let's say, for you today. I'm not going to be teaching anything for a change, but I am going to be talking about this guitar that's in my lap right now. And I'm going to be talking about why it has become my number one guitar over the past, let's say, the four years that I've owned it. If you've been watching my channel for some time now, you'll have seen this in countless lessons over the years. And yeah, I absolutely love this thing. And I have made a couple of videos about this guitar in the past. One, when I first got it, I made like a new guitar day video back in, what do you mean, December 2017 when I first got it, kind of going through the spec sheet and whatnot. And then maybe a year after that, I decided to controversially change the pickups to DiMarzio's. That video did quite well. It's got quite a lot of views on my channel, so you can go and watch that if you wanna know my reasons as to why I chose to put DiMarzio's in a guitar like this. Uh, but I guess like six months after that, I actually decided to put the original pickups back in the guitar. Uh, but I never made like a follow-up video explaining why I decided to put the original pickups back in the guitar. And ever since then, the number one question that I get asked on YouTube is always, what pickups are in this strap? Why did you put the original pickups back in uh, after the DiMarzio's? When did you do that? Uh, and so I figured I might as well just make a video about this because why not? So we'll start off by just talking about what this guitar actually is, what year is it, you know, the spec and all that stuff. But then I also put out a question on my Instagram story, just asking you guys to send me questions for, you know, what you want to know about this specific instrument. So probably towards the end of the video, we'll go through some of the questions and, you know, in the process of me talking about the guitar before we do that, probably a lot of the questions will be answered already. But uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. I do have the original case on the floor over there and in it we've got the like certificate of authenticity and the actual spec sheet and all that. So we'll get into that. But I bought this in December 2017 from Guitar Guitar in Glasgow, which is my favorite guitar shop in the world out of all the guitar shops I've visited, even all like the vintage ones in America and all that, I still absolutely love Guitar Guitar in Glasgow. They've got a great selection and this is not an ad or anything, but um, it's just, you know, a great place. I recommend it if you're in Scotland. So I decided to buy this guitar around that time because, well, this was like two months after my YouTube channel had taken off. And when I started to get good views on my videos, as a result, I saw a lot of sales coming in from my first course which was a nice surprise because i'd only been doing wedding gigs up until that point that was my only form of income after leaving uni in terms of music so i was you know looking at getting part-time bar work and, and stuff like that uh, exactly around the time that my youtube channel started to do well so i went from thinking that i wasn't going to be able to afford 
a new guitar for another five to 10 years, realistically, to realizing that I would soon be able to afford a really nice guitar uh, like this one, and I would be able to, you know, buy it without it being like a self-destructive, financial, reckless decision. And so, this is my first ever Strat. I never owned a Strat prior to this. I mean, technically, I had a Yamaha Pacifica as my very first guitar, uh, which I think I sold to buy a phone when I was like 10. Just, you know, one of my regrets as a guitar player, but whatever. This is my first Fender Strat, and it's a 2017 custom shop Strat. It's a 1960s spec, and it is a relic. So all this wear and tear, that is not solely been accrued over the past four years of me <laughs> filming YouTube videos in my flat and occasionally playing gigs. Yeah, a lot of the uh, wear and tear that you see on this guitar that was done by the, you know, the people at the Fender Custom Shop. The reason I went for a, a Custom Shop Strat over an American or a Mexican was actually to do with the color. So I wanted specifically a Fiesta Red Strat, which is this color here. And that's because of Gary Moore and John Frusciante, both guys uh, who are pretty famous for playing Fiesta Red Strats. This is not a color, at the time at least, that you could find on American production Strats or Mexican production Strats. So yeah, I took a look on the Guitar Guitar website to see if they had any Fiesta Red guitars. They had this one in stock in the Glasgow shop, but they also had like a pre-owned black relic Strat as well, which was a similar sort of spec. So I went along one day tried both of them out extensively, sat down for about an hour in the shop, trying them both out, going back and forth, back and forth. And I eventually settled on this one because it just, it was very close. Both of the guitars, they were both custom shop strats. They both felt amazing to play, but this one just edged it. Maybe because of the color, I don't know. So I think I put it down a deposit that day, and then maybe a month later, I went back with the rest of the cash and, and paid for it in full. And since then, yeah, like I said, it's grown to become my number one guitar. John, could you grab the, uh, there's a booklet inside the guitar case. Okay, so this is like, if you buy a guitar from the Fender Custom Shop, you get this nice little booklet, which has, not looked at this in years, like the original tag. It's got a certificate of authenticity here. And then we also have, we'll get close ups to this later, but we have the actual spec sheet. So I'm now about to answer the number one question that I get asked on YouTube, which is what pickups are in this guitar? Because when people ask me, I don't really know what to say um, because they don't really have memorable names as far as I can recall. So let's take a look. Right, so what it says here is neck pickup, 60 Strat Rail, middle pickup, RWRP 60 Strat Rail and Bridge Pickup 60 Strat Rail. So I guess just Fender Custom Shop 60 Strat Relic pickups. So yeah, I'll get like close-ups of this so you can take a look at all the all the details yourself. your questions because I don't really know what else to say about it right now but if we take a look on Instagram at the questions you guys have sent in pickups 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 about 50% of the pickup 50% of the questions are about the pickups so let's pick something else is there any mods that you regret doing or is there anything you want to change but are afraid of doing with this guitar um, well, you know, I, I talked about changing the pickups to DiMarzio's. I don't regret doing that because it was easy enough to put the originals back in. Is there anything that you would want to change about the guitar but you're afraid of doing? I guess so, yeah. You know, you'll notice that I never used the whammy bar on this guitar. I've got, I think, five springs in the back so that it's basically, you know, the tremolo doesn't really move at all. I would love it if this was a hardtail, but I'm never gonna like actually replace the bridge on it because 
The guitar feels pretty perfect the way it is, and if I want a hardtail strat, then, well, I'll just buy one eventually one day. When did you finally discard the humbuckers and go back to the single coils? I guess I did it about six months after I had the DiMarzios in, because they are humbuckers that can sound kind of single coil-like, or they were, and yeah, I, I put the, the single coils back in like six months after that because I just decided I wanted that classic vintage Strat tone. Ali in the Parade asks, what's its name? This might be a bit controversial, but I really I cringe when guys name their guitars or like refer to it as like she, like, oh, this is her, this is my like Cassandra or whatever. No, that's, I'm not, I'm not into that at all. No offense if you are, each to their own. What makes it your number one guitar? Well, it's not the fact that it's a Strat or to do with, you know, the pickups it has or anything like that. It's just the way it feels. It just, it's always, always comfortable to play. And at the risk of sounding really cheesy, it's like an extension of me as a guitar player. That's what, that's how comfortable this guitar feels to play to me. And it's just one of those instruments that you pick up, you have an instant connection with. And that's only happened two times in my life, once with this guitar and once with uh, a guitar that my friend Gabriel Bergman lives out in LA. He has a YouTube channel of his own. He has this absolutely stunning Gibson Custom Shop 335 that when I first picked that, up that guitar and played it, um, you know, I just, I could have sat there for hours, just had an instant connection with it. So Gabriel, if you're watching, I miss you, man, but I also miss your guitar. String action, not too high, not too low. Radius and string gauge. Uh, I like 11 to 48s on a Strat and the radius. This is a 60 spec Strat, but it does have a nine and a half inch radius, I believe. Yeah, 9.5 inch radius. So it's good because it doesn't it doesn't fret out too much if you over bend. Did you block the tremolo or is it floating? I didn't block it, but as I said, I put five springs in the back so it barely moves. Do you have a go-to pickup selection when just playing or noodling around? That's a good question. Um, not really. I like obviously I love the neck pickup, middle pickup, neck and middle together. I think my least used position on the five-way selector is position two, so that would be the bridge and middle pickups together. How much shit did you get for the noise cancelling pickups? <laughs> yeah, quite a lot. If you go and take a look at the comments section on that video, it's pretty, it's probably the most heated debate I've ever seen on one of my YouTube videos. Maybe I should do more like controversial things like that. Buy like a vintage Gibson, put like EMGs in it or something. Did you piece it together or was it a complete purchase? Neck specs and model. Um, no, I didn't piece it together. Uh, I don't have quite that much money to do like a proper custom shop order with Fender, uh, at least not now anyway. It was, um, yeah, it was in stock at Guitar Guitar, like I said. And let me see, neck specs model. I don't really know what you want to know, but it's got a AAA Rosewood fretboard, so it's really dark. It's pretty dirty right now, it needs a clean. 60s style oval C neck shape, so it's not too thick, but not too thin, which is perfect for me. Does it gent? Um, it probably could, but I don't gent, not really. I actually used to enjoy playing like periphery stuff back in the day, believe it or not, but uh, I'm not, you're not gonna be seeing me put this in like drop C anytime soon. Did you get a setup after you bought it? Like two years after I got it, yeah, I mean, custom shop, Fender custom shop guitars that come like out of the box, like, you know, perfectly ready to go. Does it stay in tune well? Yeah, it does. Um, whenever I change strings, quick tip for you guys, uh, I use a product called Big Ben's Nut Sauce. And that's basically a lubricant that goes in the nut slots when you're changing strings. And I also put a little bit on the saddles as well. So that means that when you're tuning up, you're not gonna hear any like pings, which is what happens when the when there's there's too much friction in the nut and the string gets caught. Right, that about does it then. So yeah, this is my favorite guitar. I know that people are gonna be like, well, you said like a Tele would be your number one desert island guitar. And that's true, it is. Like I was literally on an island over uh, four months of the last lockdown, uh, staying with my parents and I took a Telecaster with me over my Strat. But, you know, most of the time I'm not 
on island so i'll make this my number one guitar if it's an option so yeah absolutely love this guitar oh yeah i never mentioned the price so this is the most expensive guitar that i've bought and probably will ever buy unless i go for a prs i guess and at the time this cost 2799 pounds i'm not sure what that is in dollars but you know a currency conversion wouldn't be an accurate representation because you know as you know like international brands they won't just price their products you know based on what the current currency conversion is so i'm not sure how much this would cost in us dollars but yeah it would still be pretty expensive but was it worth it a hundred percent would i buy another fender custom shop guitar in the future yeah i would love to get a custom shop telly at some point and this sounds this entire video actually sounds like it's an ad for the fender custom shop it's not i bought this with my own money years ago i absolutely love this guitar yes i have done sponsored videos with fender before but yeah i don't know i just i've just been feeling like i wanted to do you know different style of content compared to the usual instructional stuff so i hope that this video was nice and informative for you guys you enjoyed listening to the clips of me playing this guitar and if there's anything that i failed to mention in this video that you want to know about the instrument then yeah just leave a comment below or follow me on instagram and shoot me a message there thank you guys for watching like and subscribe please and i will see you in the next one